Hello, ladies and gentlemen, and you're watching Paleo 101. We're talking about fossils, minerals, and everything recorded in the Earth's rocks. Today is October 16th, 2019, and today is National Fossil Day. And this is a day for us to celebrate the importance of fossils, fossil resources, and the paleontological resources around not just uh, the United States, but around the world. And today I wanted to share a few fossils that I have on the table today and uh, just talk about fossils in general. And fossils are actually not rare. A lot of people think that fossils are actually rare things to find. Well, they're not. You can find fossils li uh, literally in your backyard, depending on what type of rock you're in. If your backyard has limestone or sandstone and or shale, you're most likely to find a fossil in those particular types of rocks. So you can literally find a fossil either in a river or a stream or a creek, or even, even your backyard that does contain sedimentary rocks. So uh, if your backyard or wherever place that you're in does contain sedimentary rocks you're likely to find a fossil and fossils aren't rare you don't have to travel so long or long distance distances to find fossils and I have a few fossils on the table here um, this is an ammonite this comes from Europe this is a Dactylioxorus commune ammonite this is from the Jurassic period about uh, 209 million years ago and this is an animal that was related to today's nautilus and octopus. This was a relative of squids. This was a, ce a cephalopod. This here is, of course, a famous megalodon tooth. Um, a totus megalodon, a totus um, megalodon uh, or Carcharicles megalodon. Uh, this is a megalodon tooth from Georgia. So Georgia is the state that I that I live in, and this was found in Georgia. Megalodon teeth specifically are found along the uh, Savannah River and other places in Georgia, and they're very common to find um, in different places like South Carolina and on, on the, and along the East Coast like Florida. And this is a megalodon tooth here. You can see the serrations that are on it. It's just a really beautiful tooth. Now, it's not a complete tooth. The tip is still missing, and it has piece of the root missing, but it's still a relatively nice looking megalodon tooth. And you, it gives you the relatively, uh, relatively shaped tooth that this animal would have had in its mouth. Uh, this, is about, this is probably about five million years old from the Miocene. Uh, this here is an exogyra that I found when I was collecting fossils in Mississippi. Um, exogyra is an ancient oyster that lived during the Jurassic and mostly diversified during the late Cretaceous period, uh, around 71 million years ago during the Campanian and uh, Menestrician stage. And this is actually one of the shells. Um, exogyra is a very, very large shell. The specific species of this is S Exogyra castata. And this I found when I was collecting fossils in Mississippi is a relatively nice uh, shell. This animal would have, the fleshy part of the animal, the foot would have lived inside of here, and the shell is twisted. Exogyra means twisted shell because it has, at the end, uh, it's a twist at the end of the shell, so that's why it's called exogyra. And this is a, a an ancient oyster that lived during the late Jurassic and the Cretaceous period, and it's one of the first fossils that I collected from the Mesozoic era. So it's a relatively nice fossil, and I found other uh, other specimens of exogyra, and exogyra is very common in Georgia as well. Here is a piece of a mammal called a dugong or Metaxotherium uh, floridium, which is a relative of a manatee that existed um, during the Miocene and during the Pleistocene period, um, around relatively about maybe five million years ago. And uh, this is actually a piece of the rib. Um, dugong ribs are actually quite dense, um, and it's because they're able to balance themselves in the water. This is why they have uh, very solid ribs like this, very solid bones, so they can uh, float in the water because they have a lot of fat. And so in order to, for them to float, they have to have these dense bones. And you can collect these by the millions, honestly. They're very, very common fossils found in Miocene deposits, especially in Florida and Georgia. You'll find lots and lots of these. In fact, you may get tired of them um, finding these because they're just so many common, they're very common fossils. I found a few when I was collecting fossils in Gainesville, Florida, and I found a good amount of dugong ribs like this. Um, not maybe this large, but, you know, set sections of pieces of the rib from uh, Metaxotherium. And last but not least, this is a trilobite, um, one of my favorite fossils of all time. Uh, this is a trilobite, a uh, fecopa trilobite. You can see it, may, it has these eyes here. It's a relatively rolled up specimen. When trilobites die, when trilobites want to protect themselves, they roll up into a tight ball 
and uh, this this allows them to protect themselves against predators. And you can actually find them fossilized like this in the closed up position where they tuck their pygidium underneath their cephalon or they tuck their tail underneath their head. And so this is a specimen that has been rolled up. So you can see the pygidium or the tail is here, uh, the tail plate is here, and then the head is here, which is right here. And there's the gabella and those are the eyes. Um, this is a Fakapa trilobite that was found in Morocco, Africa. So again, trilobites are one of my favorite fossils and I love them a lot. Um, I got exposed to fossils when I was really young. Um, again, I will never forget the story. A teacher uh, took me to her classroom and showed me her fossil collection. I've never seen fossils before. I knew what fossils were because I knew what dinosaurs were. I was obsessed with dinosaurs when I was little. But I knew, I knew what fossils were, but I've never seen a fossil before. So this teacher took me to her classroom and it was, I think it was me and another student. She took me to her classroom and she pulled out a drawer of fossils. She had a plant fossil. She had the famous trilobite and she had a few other things like dinosaur coprolite or dinosaur dung. It was, it was polished. I believe that specimen came from the Morrison Formation now that I think about it. And she had some other things and she had like rocks with a few fossilized shells in it. And in after she gave us a tour of her fossil collection, she gave me a crinoid stem. And so this is the animal, what a crinoid looks like. This is Platycrinides. This is the stem here, the twisted stem here. And this is the calyx of the head of the animal. And this is a crinoid. And uh, crinoids, I, I like crinoids a lot. I've collected crinoids out in Alabama and in Tennessee. They're very common fossils to find. And, but they're actually not they're not as common as the complete specimens. You'll usually find them in stems uh, where their stems are broken down. And uh, this is a complete one. This was found in Indiana. This is about 350 million years old from the lower Mississippian rocks of um, Indiana. And uh, she gave me a crinoid stem right in my hand, and I was just fascinated by fossils ever since. It wasn't until then that I actually understood geology. Um, back around when, when I was like eight years old, I hit a rock against concrete and opened up, turned out to be granite, and I could see the beautiful quartz, mica, and feldspar crystals that were shining into the rock. And um, I was just fascinated by that. And um, I actually became interested in geology. And that's when I started connecting geology with fossils. And that's where you got paleontology. Paleontology is the combination of different other fields, but it's mainly uh, geology and biology and you get paleontology. And so I started connecting that together and I've been obsessed with fossils ever since. And that's what you know started me as a, uh, started on my path being a paleontologist and a geologist. So whatever you guys are interested in, definitely go out and uh, collect fossils split shale, look, turn over rocks, be sure to wear gloves, and of course, uh, be safe while doing so. But just go out and explore the distance of the past. Fossils are, I love to say fossils are frozen time in your hands, because that's what I think that they are. Fossils are, dis are uh, entrances to distant worlds. Um, when you pick up an animal, when you pick up a fossil like this, you're picking up something that lived millions of years ago or billions of years ago and you're touching it. It's no longer living. It's no longer living. It's no longer living today. It's extinct. Such as the ammonites. They're extinct. There are no ammonites living today. Um, only their relatives live, but there are no ammonites living today. This is a species. This is a class of animal or phylum of animal that is completely gone and extinct and wiped from the fossil record. All we have are these animals are their fossils, are their petrified remains in the rocks themselves. So I assure you, you guys need to go out, look for fossils, go out and collect, guys. It's just, fossils are everywhere. It's not, they're not rare. Go out and find a piece of history like this. This is Paleo 101, and I'll see you later.